Okay. I'd like you to see some bullshit. Um, I was redoing my shoes, or I got a pair of shoes that um, that were that were leather that I wanted. They were black because Dansko has a pair of shoes that they don't sell anymore that I really wanted. Well, that they were 2011 shoes. It's 2015 now, and I just got around to wanting them and uh, well, wanting to be able to get them. And they, they had an iridescent quality to them, whereas wherein they, they changed color in the sun. It was really, they're really cool. They had sandals, they had clogs. So I wanted clogs. And, uh, but, but they, they were $125, which I couldn't afford, nor did they have my size seven. So I said, well, let me try to make them myself, you know? So I get a pair of black, black shoes off of eBay and they said leather and man-made material. Now when it's leather and man-made material, you know what that means? It means that it's a leather frickin' upper, okay? And the man-made should be the sole, okay? That's not the case with these shoes because I learned the hard way. By first, I created the shoe and painted it and this is what it looked like, okay? That's what the shoe looked like on the, you know, changing color. As you can see, it's like purple and green. Okay, that's what the dance goes. You don't look at the front part. So there, there it is, right? I, I recreated it. Glitter dots, painstakingly, lots of time. And then what I learned was uh, the, 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 the prismatic opalescent, uh, pearlescent paint is also called an interference paint because it has mica flakes uh, chipped into it or little, it's like very fine glitter dust, but it, they're called mica flakes, which change color in the sun. So I completed the shoes. I finished them and I went to use them and right where the, the crack of your foot, the toe, the toe be, between the arch on the top of the foot and the toe area, that area in here began to crack off in the shoe. So I learned that I that I was not supposed to just be using acrylic paint from the art store, but I was supposed to be using leather paint. So I go to Manhattan Wardrobe Supply, which has everything, and, and I f get the leather Angelus paint. And then I learn that I'm supposed to take down this leather uh, paint to prepare the surface um, w with an acetone. So I'm taking down this leather, this leather, uh, paint that's on this leather and I realize you know this is not leather the the actual form of the shoe is crumbling apart and this is what I get now obviously I painted a primer on it but I'm gonna get to that so I look more closely and I look inside the shoe and I see this I see this I see something that says this if you could read it my it says lever leather counter leather sock balance man-made materials made in China made in China all right that should be it right there so what is a leather counter what is a leather sock what is the balance I'm thinking okay the balance is the soul well I come to find out that the leather counter leather sock is just like as if they pulverized leather and then sprayed it on you know what that, that ain't leather to me. Okay, that's not leather. So, and what part of the shoe has this? I don't know. Well, it certainly wasn't this whole part. It certainly wasn't this whole part. It certainly wasn't the trim. Okay, you know where the leather counter is? Exactly where it's stamped. It's probably this. I'm not even sure. And this in here isn't leather. It's got like a, a, um, a foamy fleecy, fake, man-made, you know, so the whole damn shoe is man-made. So I completely, what I showed you the back of the shoe, I had done the whole shoe and it cracked apart, and I had to peel off like it was peeling like a reptile sheds its skin, and so I peeled off all that work. Every single dot you see in there was a glitter dot done by hand with the interference, layers of the interference paint on top. Okay, so I peeled that all off. And then I uh, found out from the kind gentleman and the other number of posse guys that arrived that are like Michael Jordan redo sneaker experts. 
that I could just use a simple primer instead of a um, a leather um, what is it called a leather preparer a, uh, it's a adhesion adhesion promoter it's called an adhesion promoter that that's for leather or vinyl or actually not even for leather um, for vinyl and for shit that I have so an adhesion promoter comes like jars this big this big and they're like 20 bucks I'm like it's just two little tiny elfin size 7 shoes I want to do find out from the guys that I could use um, some sort of Benjamin Moore primer instead of this adhesion promoter so I go to Home Depot and I can, and, and of course they show me to the court, that's like 10 bucks, I don't need that. So I found um, the spray can, and I'm hoping it works, okay, I'm hoping this freaking works. And I went down the hall, because I couldn't do it in my apartment, and sprayed it into uh, this little thing. And, and then I created that, I cut it out, and that was good coconut water. I'm putting, look, harmless coconut water, I'm putting something insanely harmful into that. The primer, the primer, um, thank God that's made in the USA, in Illinois it says. I always look at where things are made because I like to support our country. Um, so these guys at the store said, the Manhattan wardrobe, said, you want a thin coat, well the thinnest coat is, sp is spray, but they said you could paint it on. Well, painting it on did not do a thick coat, a thin coat, it did a thick one. And look, that's the, that's the shit material. Then underneath there is stuff that I couldn't get up. Some of that shedded stuff I could, you know, I, I could have gotten it up, but I didn't. So now I'm going to redo all the freaking dots. Yeah, it won't have the black color underneath, but I actually don't even care anymore. I should have probably went out and got black to repaint it black. I don't understand how some, I, I'm going to learn again. Okay, this is like all the supplies. Okay. To try to make shoes and all the time, these were $125 shoes, which I couldn't afford and couldn't buy, but it would they didn't even have them at this point, like I was saying. I would say these supplies now are up to $75, $30 for the freaking shoes, which I'm going to try to contact them and say, hey, you know, Leather and Man made a little vague, vague, okay, and try to get some money back for that. $30 for the, for the plastic freaking shoes, and then another one little bottle of this was like 10 bucks, not appropriate for the shoe. Uh, I got another bottle just in case I was fickle about the color. Then, then uh, oh this, this was only like three bucks from Michaels. This was the glitter dots. Then I had to go to Manhattan Wardrobe Supply and get the glitter dot paint and the Angelus uh, clear, goes neutral, goes on clear to create the interference. And then next door to Manhattan Wardrobe Supply this freaking thing, see this, Pfft, would cost $13 for this little puff of mica flakes that I'll have to mix with the neutral and hopefully, hopefully it'll mix and, and not repel one another because that's a lot. Of, so anyway, $75. So this is like school on how to paint shoes for $75, but it, I'm doing it myself. So I'm going to attempt to put, I'm going to attempt to put on... Um, the paint onto this primed area which was too thick too thick now and and see if it's gonna look different from the back I have to put black down but you know what I don't have freaking black and I don't have black leather paint that would be another three dollars oh my god I should have gotten the black it would have only been three dollars a three dollar <sighs> I don't know what to do now oh I can do a patch I'm going to do a little trial patch. That's a good idea. A swatch. A little patch is called a swatch. So I know I'm like abrasive and, and, and horrible sounding, but you know what? That's what happens when you're pissed. Okay? You sound like this. All right. To be continued later. Okay, so here we are another day, and I did some work on these shoes, and the shoes, um... I decided to not, I did some swatches like I last said, and the swatches entailed putting glitterite glitter dots on the shoe directly on the primer, and then I had also 
put the mica flakes into the clear, neutral Angelus leather paint, about a teaspoon's full worth of the mica into here, and it, and it gave me no problem. I just shook up the bottle, and I also learned that this bottle comes with its own little paintbrush attached like a nail polish bottle. And um, no problem, so thank goodness for that. And the glitterite, so, so then I did a swatch of that, and it ended up being just not what I was looking for. So I decided to research, okay, I have to get the black paint to paint these shoes black again. And I didn't want to go out. And, I re and then I did some research. What exactly is the difference between a leather paint, which is acrylic, and a black, uh, and, a, and a regular paint, acrylic paint? So I found two things. One was that leather paint is thinner and which means to me perhaps more water and the other thing was that uh, a fabric paint would do well as well because it's flexible like a leather paint. A leather paint is flexible. So I realized I had some jacquard fabric paint and I decided to thin it out a little bit and, and I ended up painting the shoe and it ended up being really good. It's working. so. I put that on there and then I went as far as, um, you know, and then I would, then I would bend the shoe a little bit to see if it would crack and it's not cracking. So that's a good sign. Then I went as far as putting the glitterite dots onto the shoe and then also a thin layer of this Angelus clear neutral leather paint with the uh, mica flakes uh, sifted um, poured into them and mixed and sh I shook it up and I put one layer on the shoe and it is kind of purpley and actually it's looking nicer than what I thought was like what could get nicer than this this is actually looking nicer now so I might wait for this to peel off because this was the regular uh, acrylic paint non non vinyl leather I, I, once again this is not leather this is garbage shoe so all this work on a garbage base is just Kind of disheartening to me but now i'm also bending this and it seems to be not cracking and holding i mean the true test is going to be walking around for a couple of hours outside and i'm going to put more uh, layers on it so i'm having success oh and by the way um this is a chagrin chagrin uh look i'm going for where the interference this is it's also called chagrin which is actually, uh, in my research I found, is a shark skin. What I guess if shark, shark skin was tanned, if the hide was tanned of shark skin, it would come out looking almost more, I would say more like this than this, but I'm liking this a lot. So that was the look I was going for. So I was, re I was creating that look. When this glitterite dries, the dots actually look a little smaller unless they're really piled high. Like this in here looks like it's drying so it's less, there's less glitter so I give it another little, little bit of glitter. It's, they're smaller so I'm 